Playing in a grim, low fantasy setting is something people still love when they're playing 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Is it because casting a single simple spell has a much bigger impact in a low fantasy setting or a low magic setting than in a high magic setting? Is it because people like to get their boots dirty crossing a swamp with nothing else than a backpack, a rope and each other to pull each other out of the dirt, I don't know, but I am in the same camp. Especially if that low magic setting introduces two new mechanics that I'm really excited about. And you get both hardcover books, digital assets and access to Foundry VTT edition. That is a really good deal. That is a really, really, really good deal. Especially if it's true that it comes in one of these boxes. Like you get both books, 500 plus pages in total. You get both PDFs and you get Foundry VTT version for 89. Hi there fellow role players and game masters. My name is Mr. Trask and this is still your go-to YouTube channel for anything Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition third party related. And today I want to talk about Shadow over Vansrike, a grim setting and adventure for 5th edition. Old school gaming meets path breaking mechanics. Now uh, path breaking, I don't know if they are path breaking, uh, but they are really cool. Now the reason I want to talk about this is fairly simple. They do three things that I think are really cool uh, that I always love. Like, well, they do one thing that is really cool and then two other things that I think are going to be really cool because they promise to do those things and I'm really curious about what they are going to end up looking like when this thing is ready. So uh, Shadow Over Vance Reich, in short, is a grim setting, a low magic setting. I'm, I'm going to say it, it's more like medium magic instead of like really low magic but they say themselves as it's low magic but it is grim it is of course grim and the first thing that i think they do really well i just want to go quickly over the kickstarter page and kind of show you what you can get and why i think it's interesting and then i want to look into the preview pdf and kind of look at a few things uh if, uh, with a m little bit more of a microscope so they funded almost 30k euros out of the uh seven and a half k in euros they were looking for with uh, 416 backers and still nine days to go uh so you can still jump in this one shadow over vance reich i'm just gonna so and quick uh, shadow over vance reich is a campaign setting first release lands of exile uh features a grim and gritty adventure taking place in the city of vance reich so i'm just gonna quickly go over here and this is like the main reason why i think this is really cool because shadow over vance reich basically is two books but as you uh, you might know my channel, you might know me when you're watching this video. Uh, you, if you know me, you know that I really like campaign setting books that have everything you need in the campaign setting book. Like in one book. I really like books that do that. Um, I like books. I'm just peering at my, uh, my collection right here. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, for example, is one of those where you have subclasses and races and everything that makes sense for that setting in one book and that is what they're promises to, promising to do they have on one end one book that is the shadow over vance reich adventure module uh from levels one to eight which is a pretty uh big adventure module starter setting guide for the lands of Ad uh, exile a new class which is the chain warden eight new subclasses five new lineage options and uh, the lineage options are of course uh, uh not called races anymore they're now called lineage uh because now you have like the, the your lineage and your heritage and all that stuff for some people are doing it that way others are just sticking to the race part you can mix max all you want with that uh, that's a different story 50 plus new monsters and uh, adversaries uh, new spells magic items new feeds backgrounds modular and massive city events table uh, 200 plus pages of content so this is basically the campaign setting guide as in it is a bunch of stuff you can use well, that's how i am interpreting it a bunch of stuff you can use that makes sense for that campaign setting it has a starter guide for the lands of exile the lands of exile is uh, the campaign setting itself and then van Shrike is the city more zoomed in like where the uh, uh the the adventure the first adventure is taking place and then once you have everything you need in order to play your new subclasses your new lineages your new weapons your new feats whatever they also have a mercenary companion which i think is really interesting but it isn't necessarily per se to grab it right 
So the mercenary companion has two things that I really like. So first of all, they have 100 unique mercenaries with backstories and quest hooks. I like that, but it is not my, um, it is not like the reason I would buy this. Although it's like the bulk of the of the book. Uh, nine peculiar mercenary guilds. Um, also really cool to have to just take a guild and put that in your game, even if you're not playing in Shadow over Vance Reich or not playing in like this setting or this uh, adventure, you can just take out a guild or a mercenary guild or whatever and put it in your game, whatever. Uh, and then there is two new systems and this is what I always like. I like where people take the 5th edition rules and then bring in a system that makes sense for their setting but also can work for your own setting. First there's the mercenary system. Everything you need for a mercenary work. Um, there is a little bit more information here in the uh, in the preview PDF, I will be looking into that in a little bit. But uh, the main thing that I find really cool is the battle scars system for system shock, lingering injuries and veterancy rewards. That is something really cool. There are a few examples in the preview PDF and I really, really like that where if you take a certain amount of damage, um, it's different from ever, for everybody. I'm just going to say uh, a quarter of your health, like at once. You can suffer a minor or major injury. That could be like a scar all across your face or your chest or maybe a, your hands get chopped off. And they basically gives you give you uh, abilities that come with that Injury. So, for example, if you have a scar all across your face, you'll see that in a bit in this video. A scar all across your face. Um, you have a scar all across your face, but you can also get an advantage on uh, charisma checks that are if you want to intimidate people or whatever because you have a freaking scar across your face. You're like, I'm badass. I'm still alive. So I really like the battle scar system uh, from what I'm seeing. I cannot say for sure if it's going to be as awesome as, as I think it's going to be. And then there's boons and burdens. I always like boons and burdens where you get something that's cool and something that's bad. Because not only is it in... Uh, mechanical wise really cool to have like stuff to play with but also from a storytelling storytelling perspective it's always cool to have a burden to have something that brings your character down but also that brings your character up because it just adds to the realism and just like um yeah the re realism and just getting like tied to your character uh so there's uh of course a bunch of stuff here there's two source books there is a events deck a city events deck where you could just pull from a card and then you get like a random event for your city uh you get a gm screen you get a miniature you can get dice you can get a dice mat you can get all of this crap if you take the collector's box you probably get all of this stuff uh i personally i'm not like a big fan of all like kickstarters that have all all of this stuff going on um but if you like that you like that you just grab it uh, um, and i also think that is the reason why uh, 416 backers have raised 29,000, like almost 30k euros it's because they probably are taking a lot of this stuff home with them um, which is of course cool so just uh, a quick look at the prizes before we jump into the preview PDF, uh, let's see. So the single PDF for one book, 24 uh, US dollars, pretty good. But then 39 for both uh, PDFs uh, and all digital assets. So there's going to be probably maps and stuff like that, um, which is uh, a, a pretty good price for two PDFs of each 200 plus pages of content. I think... Um, I think that's a pretty good price. It's a, it's a fair price these days, right? So there's 49 bucks for a hardcover and they adding the PDF to that. Again, like I say always, I understand companies selling the hardcover uh, separately from the PDF. I completely understand it. But from a consumer's, consumer perspective, I really like this. You spend 50 bucks, you get yourself a hardcover and you bought yourself a hardcover. So why not give people the PDF anyway? That's just the way I see it. Um, 89. Uh, do, 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 do. So single hardcover. You can get the hardcover bundle, which is 89. And you get both hardcover books, digital assets and access to Foundry VTT edition. That is a really good deal. That is a really, really, really good deal. Especially if it's true that it comes in one of these boxes. 
Like you get both books, 500 plus pages in total. You get both PDFs and you get Foundry VTT version for 89. So for 90 US dollars, which would probably be around 85-ish euros. Yeah. And then we, of course, go into the collector's edition and stuff. So other than that, it is uh, just a Kickstarter of something that looks really good, good to my opinion. So let's look into the preview PDF real quick. And here it is, the preview PDF, or should I say demo booklet for Shadow Over Eventsreich. 31 pages stick. You can download it for yourself on the Kickstarter page. Link in the description below. I cannot talk about everything that is in here because then my video will be overly long. But look at the cover. This just says grim setting. This guy is swinging a sword in his left hand, shooting people in uh, with his with his pistol in the right in his right hand, shooting like like literally shooting through somebody's head. There's blood splatters here. There's a girl with an axe coming at him. Just probably gonna chop his head off. There's an arm flying here. There's a guy with a butcher knife coming at him. He's stepping on somebody's head. Yeah, it's uh, it is probably yeah, it's that kind of book uh, for you, right? So um. As you can see, great artwork, great stuff. Uh, and it's 31 pages, so I cannot talk about everything. They have an introduction setting uh, section about the lands of exile, about uh, how uh, it is grim, how it is um, uh, low magic, how it is uh, boots on the ground, gameplay, that's a term I always use, um, how they talk about all that stuff, but they don't go really deep into it just yet so we'll have to wait for that they talk about expanded rules and system for fifth edition the mercenary system and the um uh my computer is slow system my the battle scar system and some of this artwork look at this is just really this is awesome awesome stuff right here um yeah i also like this one a lot i like to play like one of these uh ones the boons and burns system they just go over this really quickly uh they talk about the adventure that you get which is a sneak peek uh, of the adventure that you get uh, but i'm not here to talk about that kind of stuff per se although i like it i've read it and i like it but you can read that for yourself i'm just gonna talk about uh some of the stuff they added so first of all there's a new subclass uh barbarian path of the whistle uh so uh the whistle is an ancient and secret way of focusing like a battle trance barbarians who know the path of the whistle can use custom made elegant weapons instead of heavy ones when they rage their mobility increases and they are uh, they support their nearby allies their greatest uh distinguishes feature that sets them apart from other barbarians barbarians is their superior agility and their extra uh, expertise on stealth that's really cool, actually. So you get uh, woodland weapons, graceful fury, uh, guerrilla warfare, the whistle, charge of the fat, or something like that. So graceful fury. Uh, beginning at third level, you know the necessarily necessary footwork for avoiding your opponent's strike when bolting across the battlefield. When you attack an enemy using your reckless attack, I love reckless attack. Um, feature your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks for the rest of the turn that that buffs reckless attack so much because with reckless attack there's always that trade-off that 50 50 trade-off like i do i roll with advantage but they also roll with advantage against me so this really helps in making that choice of should i do the reckless attack thing or shouldn't i so if you want to get the fuck out of somewhere you can reckless attack and then get out um of their way without them being able to attack you with uh, advantage which is really really powerful so uh they get some new weapons which are woodland weapons um guerrilla warfare at sixth level you already honed your skills when it comes to ambush ambushes and stealth maneuvers you gain proficiency on stealth skill if you are already proficient in stealth you gain expertise with that skill that's really cool uh which means your proficiency bonus is doubled additionally you, you your speed increases by 5 feet while you wear are wearing heavy armor and you gain swimming speed equal to your walking speed. Yeah, that's a really cool option for a barbarian. That's a really cool play way to play barbarian. First of all, having expertise in the style skill is really, really, really good uh, for sneaking. Duh. But it's just really good. Like when I'm playing, like when I'm game mastering Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition or whatever 5th edition, um, when people, people stealth, Having high stealth, it's just, it, it, people 
are able to do so much stuff just because they can get away with stuff and it's really cool to have that in a barbarian and then they become even faster and they can get out of the way of people uh, while they're raging so not only do they uh when you attack an enemy using your reckless attack so if you are raging let's say you are raging right and you do a reckless attack not only are you dealing extra damage but you're also have a you also have greater hit chances and you don't provoke opportunity attacks that's really cool so lineages, uh, there is the badger folk, which is um, something I would never play personally, but I know a lot of people that would, uh, and it is actually cool that they split it up uh, badger folk traits into, uh, so they have uh, brave, you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened, all badgers get that, um, you have proficiency with all simple weapons. And then you key, uh, you choose one, uh, a honey badger, a hog badger, or a striped badger. Um, which the striped badger is really cool because it gives you proficiency in stealth and perception skills. So here we go. If You, you can literally create a striped badger folk, um, barbarian path of the whistle, giving you uh, uh, already um, proficiency in a stealth skill. And then at 6th level, you can get expertise in the stealth skill. I really, really, really like that. So Charisma goes up with the Hawk. It's a Droth Walker. You don't need water to survive. In addition, you have resistance against necrotic damage. A little bit more situational. Only for those really long adventurers that have like a ton of undead or... or necromancers or whatever uh, and then there is the honey badger folk you cannot be frightened by any means which is for some reason a lot of people like not being frightened and stuff but it just doesn't happen that much in my games for some reason so i would not personally play the honey badger folk but uh the stripe yeah absolutely also just the stripe looks much cooler right and then uh, there's new magic items. Uh, look at this artwork. There's a bunch of stuff. New spells. Uh, there is a new divination spell that I always like because divination is my favorite school of all time. It is the secret listener. You attune your senses to any sending spells directed to a creature you choose. For the duration of the spell, you can secretly listen to any sending spells sent to that creature. You hear both the message and the response as if you were eavesdropping on a private conversation. You you must wear the earpiece for the duration of the spell. A small silver earpiece worth 50 gold pieces. I like it. I like this very situational spell, but I like divination spells. So yeah, thanks for putting that in here. There's boons and burdens. There's the battle scar system. This is what I was this is what I was talking about uh, in the first part of the video. So for example, you can get yourself a wound while you take a certain percent of your max health and damage in one turn or whatever. Uh, for example, a uh, uh, invisible. Uh, an invisible scar that lies beneath the surface so that's a silent wound uh let's see what else is here a deep jagged scar running across your face a constant reminder of fierce battle you fought and survived it serves as a symbol of your prowess in combat and commands respect for those who recognize its significance you have advantage on charisma intimidation checks that's cool that's so thematic that's so Good for storytelling purposes. I really like that. An invisible scar that lies beneath the surface, inflicted by a powerful spell or cursed weapon. Despite its unseen nature, it causes chronic pain and occasional bouts of weakness. A reminder that a past encounter with dark of a past encounter with dark magic. You have advantage on saving throws against spells. That's really good. So, as a game master, you can only introduce this if your players are um, willing to roleplay it. Because if you, if you look at this from a gameplay mechanic, there is no downside of having this. Because the only gameplay mechanic here is you have advantage on saving throws against spells. So, a lot of players are just going to be, I have advantage on saving throws against spells, period. It says you get occasional bouts of weakness and reminder of past encounters with dark magic. You get uh, chronic pains and all of that crap. But it doesn't say that in a 
game mechanic way. So if you aren't the kind of player, if your players aren't the kind of players that can role play that, um, this is something you leave out. For me, I know my players will role play this. Like they will have that, and I as a game master can literally in the middle of an encounter be like, oh, you get a certain burst of of pain in your in your leg, or your chronic pain just just piling up, and and my my players will not hate me for that. Um, so I think that's really cool for again storytelling. There's a lot, a lot of new systems here. There's uh, boons and burdens. For example, you can have a social boon. Uh, you were a member of a resistance group called the Cross. When the uh, local rebellion of this group was terminated by the 11th Legion, you managed to escape somehow. If you share this information with others, NPCs who are inclined to rebel against the authority will feel closer. The burden is NPCs who support the order and value and... Uh, and value the maintenance of authority will distance themselves from you. Oh, that's cool. So um, anarchists will feel closer to you, while um, patriots, <laughs> keeping just uh, stating it very simple, okay, patriots will be further away from you. Yes, really cool. Um, there's the mercenary system with a bunch of mercenaries you can just drop in your game that have a bunch of uh, role-playing stuff, combat tactics, lore, they have a stat lock so if you, one of your players wants to take over or whatever or you as a game master maybe you have a smaller party of only two players and you decide to send a mercenary with them you can just take this little bit of stat block and have that mercenary help out the uh, the party. I have been doing that a lot uh, in, in, in the past where I had a a, a party of only like two players in the party right and uh, I just added a mercenary in there that I just played because they were uh, and it's really cool to have like these uh, stat blocks to just like play the mercenary from a dungeon master perspective uh, simple straightforward but it does a thing in the party right so uh, they have a bunch of mercenaries. They have a mercenary system to give you mercenaries and mercenary guilds in your game. Uh, new backgrounds. There's all of that stuff. That's uh, Oh, and there is one creature in here. Sinful Angel. That looks really, really, really creepy. And there is a lot more to the campaign that I talked about in this video. If you download the demo book for yourself, link in the description below. They have uh, summaries of all the new stuff they have. They talk about a lot of like random rolling tables. And some people really do like their random rolling tables in there for creating mercenaries and guilds and, and other stuff. So this one promises to become a very big and very cool. And I cannot wait to get it in my hands and do a final review for you. Until next video. Bye-bye.